Yes, we are live. You go to our NRSC page to share. Okay, I'm also going to share. Help us to like and share. Please help us to like and share. Today is all about sex. Today we have a pretty, pretty lady with us also. Anyway, we are live on Facebook already. Please help oh, okay. to share. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi, Hi Angela. Hello. Hello, nice to see you. You okay. okay. well, What share? special drink is this? This is my friend who bought for us just out from oven. Mm, Chateau so yeah, a bit like juice. white peach wine. Mm. Ah, Dr. Martha should have one wine glass with us also. Yeah, cheers. Today we are going to chill and talk about yes. sex, right, and relationship. Okay, so everyone, please drink and, you know, please pour out all your sorrow. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Dr. Martha will be here to address all your concern. Okay. I've been looking forward to this very special session that we have on our New Year's Secret Club. Yes, we started earlier so that you know we can warm the crowd. Yeah. You can see the Facebook page share and I see the. Just okay. Hmm. 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 Well, I like Dr. Mata's uh, background. It looks very nice. <laughs> yes, this is Scarlet Hotel. Background. Where's your sex room? <laughs> Scarlet Hotel. Uh, this one? Yes. Please help to like and share. Our sexy topic begins. Okay, we are done okay. sharing. So for those that are watching us now, please help to like and share our page. Okay, so that <laughs> let me just uh, lower down. Okay. Okay, and uh, please help us to like and share. If you have any question, you can actually type in your comment box. And uh, we will try to address it together with Dr. Martha mm -hmm. here. Uh, okay, so let me see. Uh. Leo, are you above 18? <laughs> okay, we just do an introduction before we start. And thank you everyone for watching uh, Neuron uh, Secret, Secret Club, Club talk show again. 
So we are very honored to have uh, Dr. Martha here today to talk about sex, but not just about sex, like, about relationship yes. and some issues we, which we might face as a human being, okay? So uh, maybe we can just do an introduction again about NRSC for those who have just joined us. NRSC is a safe haven for women and mummies to share their stories and challenges they have surpassed and the problems they are still trying to overcome. Here they will find a supportive community that will help them learn and grow, giving them opportunities to connect both on a personal and a professional level. At the same time, NRSC also offers a membership platform where members can exchange personal and business ideas. We want to empower women from all walks of life, regardless of race and culture. A networking community for members to attend ex exclusive events, training, workshops, travel, media and profiling and as well as consultancy, which is Christine's expertise. We also want to create business opportunities for business owners and women who seek for a career or personal mentorship and friendship within this community. Yes, thank you so much, Angela. And of course, today we are very honored to have our relationship counselor and clinical sexologist. Wow, the name is so interesting. Right? So, uh, Dr. Mata has been in this practice for 11 years, but she still looks very young. And, uh, you know, a doctorate in human sexuality, master's in counseling, and two other degrees. She has also worked with individuals and couples with a whole spectrum of sexual challenges, concerns, and questions. So, in today's session, we will talk about love, sex, magic, and everything in between. So come, let's discover more about our sexuality together now. And, you know, over to you, Dr. Martha. Yes, thanks for having me. I'm very glad to be here. It's always very fun to be in a live session because this is where anything can go. And I, I love the challenge of being able to answer whatever comes up. So yeah, please go ahead and share with me whatever you like to ask me. Maybe you can share. Wow, start with me. Yeah, because uh, for for us, we are a uh, single mom. Mm -hmm. So sometimes sex might be not easy to come by. <laughs> yeah, so um, of course, I don't know whether is it is it true that, you know, when we start to age, the sex drive, sex drive might, you know, drop mm. or we are too stressed. Or, you know, what? I also don't know. And then my friends will have, like, you know, they are married and then they are not having sex with their partner for one year or two years and they felt that it's perfectly fine. Yeah. And then we felt that something is wrong with your husband. Maybe he has an affair outside. So, how, how, do, you, how do you see these kind of uh, issues that, you know, we face? I think mostly in Asia. Yeah, in Asia, I have encountered people who told me that um, and it's many of these cases where after they got married and have kids, they never ever even have sex. And never some, ever. Yeah, yeah. And the guys actually feel like, is there something wrong with me? Or, and I'm not attractive. Actually, it affects their confidence, but they have no one to talk to. And they all they can do, I think probably they can just do it themselves or you know, they, some of them, they are loyal and faithful. So I think it's not very healthy, isn't it? If a guy who actually still can perform, but mm. couldn't do it with their loved ones. Yeah, so I have a lot of uh, couples who come to see me. Uh, it is a very similar situation. Um, after they have their kids, I think being the responsible agents that we are, we we try to do everything well and something needs to go. So when it comes to work, uh, most Singaporeans I know of, they work long hours. And by the time they come home, they, they want to make sure that their kid is okay. And then there's the studies of their kid. Uh, then there's household chores. There may be some cooking, cleaning involved. So by the time they get to bed, there is really no energy left to even talk about sex. So their, their husband being a good Asian as well, uh, what can happen is they, they feel that the, their wife is already 
uh, very much extended and they feel guilty to have all these uh, sexual desires and so they they try to repress their sexual desires, their sexual needs. So exhaustion is a very, very real thing that I see again and again with my clients, especially women. And um, perhaps the way that we were brought up, where our where there are designated roles, very clear roles of uh, male-female roles, I think it doesn't... Uh, apply so much in modern days because women are working just as hard as the men and the demands of working life is so real that it is very difficult for women to feel that they have to take on everything and on top of that uh, have the energy to have sex so of course if you're tired you don't feel like having sex if you are feeling um, emotionally tired because you have to take care of so many things as well you also won't feel like having sex. If there's any kind of resentment about the lack of support, you also will not feel like having sex. So uh, I think it's true that biologically, um, sex drive can change uh, as we get older. However, for some people, the sex drive doesn't change. So I think it depends on the individual. What I do know is I think a lot of people feel bad and guilty about self-pleasuring, um, uh, because they are married, that they feel that is their their wifely duties that they must have sex with their partner. So I would say if there's no sex for an extended period of time, I think it goes without saying that probably your partner is masturbating. And in some cases, masturbating is easier because you don't have to worry about your partner's timing, your partner's mood. <laughs> you don't have to worry about being interrupted. You just uh, do it quickly, get it over with which in the long run, it's it's not about just being functional. It's also about the, the closeness and intimacy that sex can uh, cause in a relationship. So I feel that when we are trying to cope with so many things, something needs to go. I think this is why a lot of couples that I know of, they do have some form of help. They do have a domestic helper. They do uh, get support from their parents or parents-in-law or or babysitter or childcare. However, the moment the child is uh, with them, they want to spend every moment that they have with the child. And this is this is a very responsible thing to do. However, they, they have forgotten to also put aside time for themselves, the individual, and also for their with their partner without having kids. So some of my more enlightened and more, I would say, yeah, more enlightened clients, they do put aside uh, time for couples date. So they have uh, date nights, they spend time to talk to each other, whether it's late night movie, to the cinema, um, or like just like a, a, a quick dinner without kids. Um, but even then they don't feel like having sex because they are exhausted. So it's not just the woman uh, who is exhausted. I think the, the man is also quite exhausted as well. And uh, nowadays, it's very different. Working life is very different. It's not 9 to 5 or 9 to 6. A lot of my clients are working until uh, 10, uh, get home at midnight, things like that. It's, it's really, really common. The amount of stress that uh, people are undergoing that uh, I think our, gener our parents' generation may not have as much. Uh, I think this has to do with the fear of losing their job, retrenchment, and uh, one person doing three people's jobs. I hear this very, very common, often. So it's a matter of survival. And when your body is uh, going through a lot of stress, uh, it actually triggers fight, flight, or freeze. So your body will feel that you are always doing catch up. You're always uh, trying to juggle all these things but actually not doing a good job at it and what suffering is uh, it's not just of course sleep yes you keep trying to get a lot of sleep but actually it's also the stress so the stress is is something that's very much psychological and you may not know where you're at in terms of stress until you are really invited to uh, spend some time thinking about it and we are so busy keeping our head down and trying to survive 
we may not realize that we are actually already completely flooded and overwhelmed. So it's, it's not uncommon that my clients will start to tell me about what's happening and their guilt about not being able to satisfy their partner and then breaking down and crying because they are just completely exhausted and overwhelmed. So this is actually uh, so common in my work. I see this a lot. Uh, what more uh, somebody who is a single mom who has to play father and mother role, who has to take care of the child's well-being, but also be the disciplinarian. It's, it's not easy. Um, so sometimes we can also be guilty of being uh, over-responsible. So there's a line between being responsible in our work and being over-responsible, where we, where we do more than is needed, where we care more than we need. And the line between personal and private um, uh, spaces, uh, work and play becomes very, very blurred. So it's not easy because we are not taught these skills to fight for our solo time or to fight for or to carve out couple time or to really uh, respect our rest time as well. Uh, yeah, so I would say actually in my experience and probably I'm just making a lot of generalizations, uh, men in general tend to be a little bit better in uh, juggling their time because I, I have I have uh, lots of women, uh, once baby arrives, their life becomes work and home, work and baby. But for the men, it's work and then home, home or baby or family men responsibilities is a small fraction. And then they actually still have some solo time to take care of themselves in terms of like going to the gym, hanging out with the boys. So sometimes it's not or they are better at it sometimes the woman is the one who doesn't want to take these opportunities so she herself feels so guilty about being away from child that she doesn't take the time for herself she doesn't take any time to go to the gym go to spa or hang out with her friends it's not that his her partner doesn't want her to it's that she doesn't want to so sometimes i try to tell my clients that you need to pace yourself because your child is going to be with you for the rest of your life possibly and by trying to rush through it and uh, give all of it to your child and not taking care of yourself you're actually also doing yourself a disservice and some parents really find it very difficult to let go of control uh, because when they are young yes you need a lot of attention but as the child gets older they still have difficulties with letting go of uh, the need to be with child all the time because the child actually doesn't want them or doesn't need them as much as before, the child is becoming more independent and yet uh, they have difficulties letting go. So sometimes it's just bringing the awareness to them that this is what's happening and they themselves will realize they need to make certain adjustments um, in, their, in their lives. Yes, I totally agree because I also have a number of friends. They are like, um, I have, I'm so busy with the children. Um, work, school, taking care of them, uh, chasing them, sleep with them, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I can't have sex with my husband because at the end of the day, we are so tired and, you know, four of them are sleeping in the same room or five of them sleeping in the same room or they actually, some of them actually separate room just to sleep with the children. And, you know, they start to neglect themselves or, you know, when they start to have scratch marks, they felt that they are not pretty anymore mm. and they have no confidence that's where you know we want to really encourage uh, you know women to take care of yourself you don't have to spend you know they always think that you know oh, you know you need to stay pretty you have to spend a lot of money no you just need to take care of yourself work out you know buy those basic products even at the NTUC they also sell cheap and nice to take care of yourself you know, drink more water and really go out, have fun with your friends, go for a manicure, go for a swim. Otherwise, I think it will affect yourself um, physically, also your husband. And that's where, you know, things start to happen when, you know, the husband has ECA outside. What and ECA? ECA, <laughs> extracurricular <laughs> activities. <laughs> and, and then, you know, they will start to blame the wife. And then the wife will say, oh, you ha are having an affair and I'm taking care of the children. But you must also understand that you are not paying attention to yourself and then to pay attention to your husband. Mm. So, so, you know, it's very important that, you know, we really have to take care of ourselves. Yeah. Else, you know, the relationship will really 
go haywire. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think about that? Definitely, it's, definitely, it's we need to take care of ourselves. So I agree with what you're saying. In everything that we want to do to make ourselves feel better, there's always the cheaper option. And uh, there are a lot of YouTube videos that also will teach us how to make our own face masks or uh, do your own nails. So there's always the cheap or free option that doesn't cost a lot of money. The thing is uh, the, the intention, the desire to have that space for yourself is very important. So of course, there are some women who will feel that, why is this all on me? I have to do the, the work. I have to take care of the kid. I have to take care of myself. I have to make sure my husband is happy. Uh, and then uh, they may feel a lot of resentment. So the the reality is, um, uh, unfortunately, I think I uh, whether it's the brain chemistry or something, I feel that women tend to be uh, much more capable to multitask. We think fast mm -hmm. and we do fast. Yeah. And some, <laughs> some men, they tend to be a bit slower. So, of course, there's resentment because you are comparing uh, apples and orange. We have different hormones running through our bodies. We have different brain chemistry, different capabilities. You can say uh, uh, a lot of it was put onto us to learn how to be independent. Mm. Um, so, that, that is a line between being independent and uh, not needing your husband's support at all. If you, if you keep uh, uh, taking on everything, you'll become overwhelmed. Mm. And, and then you don't know how to ask for help. Then you'll be resentful. So mm. whose fault is it? Because you didn't ask for help and you didn't accept help. Yeah. So part of it is learning how to balance between being independent when you need to be independent and also being able to get help when you need to get help. Mm. And uh, learning how to uh, juggle between that so that you, you have a you have a sense of balance. And I, I, I know it's not easy. However, I, uh, we, we all need to try. Even yeah. people who are single also need to learn how to balance the different areas of their lives. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I feel that end of the day, uh, uh, you have your beloved. This person is, your, is on your team. So if you, if you can learn how to communicate well with your partner, then uh, things will go much more smoothly because even if nothing has changed with the understanding of your partner, even it, be it a nod or a smile or, you know, just a pat on, on your shoulder, you know that you're not alone. So this emotional support is also very important. So a lot of my clients, they just want to save time. So they just focus on what they need to do, but they don't spend time communicating. And communication is also very sensitive because you can sometimes over communicate. You can talk so much that you're flooding your partner. They feel overwhelmed. They don't know what to do. They get confused. They feel that you're nagging. So it's easy for them to go into a, a, a kind of like a negative mindset about how you're communicating. So I sometimes suggest to my clients, uh, communication is also about being an effective communicator. You can also ask your partner how, how uh, I, you know, I have brought this topic up to you the last three times, five times. Uh, however, uh, it seems like that, that uh, there hasn't been any improvement in terms of uh, what I was asking you to help me with this and that is not done. So is there any feedback that you have for me about how I can communicate better with you? Is there any way that um, we can uh, come to a, 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 a resolution together? Um, so. I, I find that a lot of people, they think they know this is a solution and then they want to do it and it has to be their, their way. So sometimes the reason why their partner is not helping, the, person, the partner is not willing to support is because they don't like being told what to do. <laughs> so we have to be very mindful that as the wife and the lover, uh, you also have to communicate with your partner the way they like to be communicated. So ask for feedback. And they may have some resentment um, around uh, how come you are talking to me like my mother? And that might be the resistance that they have towards uh, playing a more active role. So they may actually want to play an active role. I know a lot of good men who they are very responsible, they are faithful, they want to support the family, they want to be involved. However, they always feel that the wife is doing a better job, so they don't want to disturb. They don't want to be in the way because they have been scolded. So this actually makes things much worse for the couple on the long run. 
because then you will have somebody who is very actively parenting and the other one who is stepping back and all the burden is on one person mm. yeah i see this a lot <laughs> Uh, is it is it really, is it true that is uh, really most of the Asian that is uh, re- behaving this way, or is a uh, global issues that we are facing? <laughs> I I feel it's an Asian thing. I feel it's an Asian thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's someone who posted. I agree. I'm guilty of it. But as a mother, it comes naturally. So let me share why. Okay. So of course, I see all this happening with my clients. And then I tell them what to do. <laughs> I try to be helpful. Uh, and then it's not easy. So one of the reasons why it's very difficult for mother to detach, mother to let father take over, or mother to spend more time for herself, because you cannot do everything, you cannot be everywhere all the time. You do have to take some time for yourself, otherwise uh, it will get too much. And remember, you are, you are on a long journey. It's not like one day or 10 years. It's like long time your child is going to be with you and the relationship with your child will change and you will also change so why why is it that uh, mothers are so responsible for the child by default right first of all society puts it onto us that a mother is always the nurturing loving caring one but also remember this the child came from you it came from your body so as the child was being born there are a lot of hormonal changes that causes you to really bond with your child. So there, there is a reason why uh, uh, you can say God or science made us this way, because this is to ensure the survival of the child. So traditionally, the child is always with mother. And because of the hormones and the bonding, yes, you feel very, very, very responsible for the child. So yes, as a mother, you cannot give up your responsibilities because of this bonding. It came from the child came from your body. So for father, the child didn't come from father's body. Uh, You can say it was just his sperm. You can can make light of it. The reality is in order for the father to develop a relationship with the child, the father needs to be actively involved. So by you being the more uh, responsible person and you being the more capable person, we can argue about this, uh, or doing it in the way you want, perfectionist, that one as something happening is the person actually the other person actually doesn't have the chance to bond with the child. So if the foundation, if the start, the child was not bonded to the father, the father will not be so uh will not be so actively involved. Uh, so it's not going to be a two-person thing, it's going to be a one-person thing. So it's very important, uh, I feel uh, that uh, you know, like uh birthing classes, parenting classes, parents go together. I I I feel that uh uh, it, it is very important to start to realize that you cannot micromanage and you have to even start to practice from 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 the start. Yeah, I have one question. I feel that in terms of sex, like I always feel that for guys, it's almost like guaranteed that they will achieve an orgasm. Whereas for girls, sometimes I spoke to some girls, they said, uh, the experience is painful, the experience is uncomfortable and may, very often they say that they do it just to pleasure their boyfriend. So is there any way to, you know, for us to achieve orgasm more often or every time? Because I feel that well, orgasm is something that is the most <laughs> rewarding moment ever, like, ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah it, it's a good question so i actually know of many uh men they they love sex and they really take a lot of satisfaction in seeing their partner have have fun and have pleasure they really love it when they see their woman have orgasm and when the woman doesn't have orgasm it's, it's actually very common that they blame themselves so one of the reasons why it's quite difficult for uh, women sometimes to have uh, uh, attain orgasm is because uh, uh, when we are so busy and stressed from work, it's very difficult to unwind. It's very difficult to compartmentalize between work and home. Uh, it's very difficult to relax and to come back into the moment and let go of the day, let go of the kid uh, next door or whatever, and just really focus on letting go. So a lot of us uh, nowadays are very drawn to yoga, mindfulness, meditation, 
uh, spirituality because there comes a point that what is happening at work is just so toxic that people are just trying to find ways to prevent themselves from burning out and from becoming depressed and going over the edge of, uh, uh, yeah, allegedly a lot of people are uh, now on the verge of uh, burning out and having depression uh, mm. because they feel stuck. If I quit my job, I have no income. If I quit my job, how can I feed my family? If I quit my job, I cannot find another job. Uh, even if I quit another job, the next job is not going to be the same. So a lot of us are actually in this mode of uh, feeling unhappy, but yet stuck. So that's why they are doing all these other things outside of work, like mindfulness. So if we are better in learning how to let go, being better in being present in being more mindful, doing what we can, doing what we can with what we have. This is the time that I have. This is the time that I have. If we are better in it and staying present, uh, that can help because uh, uh, I often say this, if uh, in order for us to feel, feel sensation, feel pleasure, we need to be able to be relaxed. So yeah. this is one of the reasons why women in general take longer time to have orgasm. Uh, 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 it's been scientifically researched that women need about 15 to 30 minutes of consistent stimulation before they can have orgasm. But if you're tired, if you're tired, if you're uh, you you busy, if you're rushing, then it's very difficult to have orgasm because the, the mind, first of all, hasn't really gone to the state of can I feel what I'm supposed to feel? And then for the feeling to build, it takes some time again. So mm. I actually encourage people to see as separate. Training yourself how to be mindful, letting go faster, and then uh, being able to have all these other sexual skills. Uh, so one of the things that I do teach is uh, for partners to become better with uh, pleasuring their, their partner. Yeah, with their hands. <laughs> with their hands. Okay, uh, fingering, <laughs> fingering techniques, massage techniques. So it's... I, it's, I tried on that one. <laughs> So it's it's not just it's just, it's not just um uh some people really want to make their partners uh, have better pleasure, however they don't know how. So it is important to learn how. So I do run some workshops on that, uh, and all my workshops uh, have no nudity, so they are all very educational. Uh, so it's also very common that there are certain types of pain that women experience during sex if they are having uh, pain uh, uh, every time they have sex they may develop some kind of phobia mm -hmm. to yeah. have sex so the belief that they is they are, they are already anticipating the pain to come so that is very difficult for them to relax the only way you can relax if, if you can have some experiences of pain-free sex so I, I do work with a lot of women who have this condition called vaginismus uh, it's a condition that happens when the vagina shuts down, making penetration difficult or impossible. So it's a phobia of uh, uh, penetration, and then the vagina will tense up. So when when the 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 uh, vagina owner is tensing up, it's uh it's of course painful. It can feel like a wall. It can feel like it's blocking. But there are many other reasons why there may be pain, including a uh, rough sex, including. Uh, not being fully aroused and then trying to do penetration when the person is not ready, mm -hmm. uh, maybe history of violation, uh, mm -hmm. not necessarily like rape. Uh, we often think of the worst thing, but it could be uh, many, many episodes of uh, having like a non-consensual uh, sex, like they didn't really want it, but they say yes. So if, if they have a history of duty sex, uh, the body actually at some point will take over, the body will start to shut down because the body knows that, hey, this is enough. So this, all this can happen to cause uh, more and more difficulties with sex. When it comes to duty sex, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, women do say this, that, uh, yeah, I better do it. Otherwise, he'll get moody. He'll be angry. He will be blackface. He will shout yeah. at me the next day. Uh, <laughs> things like that. Yeah. Uh, so I understand uh, the desire to keep the harmony, to have sex with your partner. So I, um, a few years ago, I started to suggest this, uh, you know, you, you think that you are, uh, so this is what I might say, you, you might think that you are doing duty sex, you are doing what your partner needs, your partner doesn't know the difference between you wanting it and you just going through the motions. However, we are, we are all, you can say mammals or animals and intuitively they can sense that you're not really into it. And because they're not, they can sense that you're not really into it, they're not satisfied. On, on the psychological, energetic level. So then they may ask for more sex because 
they have that feeling like it's not good and they just want to try again and again and again. So rather than having good sex, it's like having not good sex and then keep wanting more to prove themselves to themselves or like like it doesn't feel satisfying. Mm. So why why do this to yourself? That it's not quality sex, you think it's quantity, but actually it's not good and it doesn't feel satisfying. Yeah. Also, there is like um, in the beginning of the relationship or just studying, you know, from INA, the part I always feel that oh, it's the most exciting. And then many of my friends will say like they do it like 10 times a day and then slowly it drop and drop <laughs> and drop and drop to like the point where she's like, uh, okay. Oh, don't have that. Yeah, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's like a kind of like a roommate relationship. So I noticed this is very often. So the question is, how do we keep sex exciting between like couples who are mm. married for mm. 20, 30 years? Yeah. So one of the one of the things that I think we always miss and look forward to is the honeymoon period, when you first met your uh, beloved and all this uh all this I don't know bells and whistles and all this hormones are just coursing through your body and you 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 are just so happy to be with this person that every moment is new and precious and special so after the honeymoon period it has been scientifically researched that uh, the hormones does change it's mm -hmm. not that the hormones are not being released in your body it is like drug your body becomes immune to all these hormones so you cannot, you cannot, that is one of the biggest tragedies of life. People keep wanting that honeymoon feeling, but actually mm. they are just chasing the impossible. When something is gone, it's gone. It's just like saying, I want to be a 16 year old when I'm 46, but I'm not 46 yet, huh, by the way. <laughs> so it's like wanting the impossible. So if we can understand that there's a time and place for everything, so why are we not able to accept that there, there was a phase in the relationship that was like this? So we can we can take steps to try to kin rekindle the excitement. We can try to do things to keep the relationship yummy and juicy, but it is not going to be the same. So what a lot of people want is actually the same feeling as before. So the same as before is unrealistic, I feel. But what can we do about... Um, uh, about the future. So I actually, uh, it took me a long time to actually find this model. So there's this model where uh, it's like a triangle. So the, the, if you if you Google it, it's called triangular theory of love. And I kind of modify a little bit. So in the triangular theory of love, it says that there are three components that is needed in the, for a long-term relationship to be successful. The first one is commitment. So most of my clients are engaged or married. Uh, the second one is intimacy, so the closeness, like going on date nights, talking to each other, communication, all these things we know. But then the third component, which a lot of couples actually don't know and didn't do and didn't cultivate and didn't nurture and didn't know that they need to cultivate this, is the third one, passion. So most people do not know that passion can also die if you don't cultivate it. So what happens after a 10-year relationship? Uh, dry already <laughs> dry already it's not down there dry it's the relationship the juiciness has has died so mm. this is one of the reasons why a lot of couples are open as they are older as they uh, start to realize that uh, things have changed in terms of the feeling uh, they they will be more open to trying things like sex toys uh, dress up lingerie uh, so I, 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 I feel that um, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it, you know, they, they, they think that they are being very useful. They read a, a sex magazine. Okay, wear lingerie, 10-step program. Wear this, you will be very sexy. But I, uh, I, I think sometimes it doesn't work because actually when you wear the lingerie, if the relationship is in trouble, if the guy is... Uh, is not feeling close to you if you guys have had been having fights no matter what you do they don't feel like it means they don't feel like it so sometimes they also uh, like what i mentioned they don't like their wife to be the mother they don't like their wife to be naggy so if sometimes you wear lingerie and it's not working and then you get angry 
I went out of my way to wear lingerie, buy lingerie, expensive, it's not working. Yeah, so we have this expectation. Before. Yeah, we have this expectation that lingerie equals Hollywood formula. Must trigger this kind of ah, blinkers and uh, excitement. And if you don't get what you want, you get upset. So sometimes they also feel pressure. They know that the there is the expectation of sex or the pressure of sex. So sometimes it's it's, it's about really talking about it and saying things like, uh, "Sweetheart, I, I, uh, how do you feel about our sex life? Uh, I, uh, I, I feel that I would like to do some things to spice things up. What do you think of lingerie? Uh, so if I try this, um, do you think do you think you will like it?" So it's, it's much better to uh, communicate this and to get their buy-in rather than to spring it on them and then get angry that it doesn't work. Mm. <laughs> because perhaps perhaps the the one who is doing the lingerie trying is is uh, has a game plan, but then when you put certain like surprises on your partner, they may not uh, be receptive to it because maybe they are the kind of personality that doesn't like surprises. So usually in a relationship, there's one person who is introvert and one is extrovert. Usually one is a morning person, one is a night person. Usually one is a very routine person and another one likes variety. So if the variety person springs this on the routine guy, then he will he will get, he get surprised, you see? And then he won't be prepared. Yeah, and then he will feel that it's actually not helping. In fact, it's very off-putting. So this is what I mean like, uh, when it comes to mm. maintaining the passion, the mm. buy-in, the buy-in of both people is very important. Having the right attitude of, uh, yeah, we've been together a long time. Yeah, we know each other. We love each other. We trust each other. Let's start to try new things to explore. So sometimes it's not like Hollywood, what we think, like, you know, 20 things, candlelight dinner. Sometimes even just one or two well, well, well-placed things with consent can really enhance the the interaction quite a bit. So is it like uh, communication is the key word? Uh, communication is, is key. I feel that the tone is also uh, very important. The way you communicate with your partner uh, can, mm. can build up the relationship, can foster closeness, but can also possibly put them off. Mm, okay okay thank you so much for it oh interesting yeah <laughs> do you guys have any question you can actually you know guys can just type uh your question inside if you have any issues uh uh you know that you want to you want to ask you don't have to say it's you you just say oh my friend said that you no know, she has this and i just pretend that it's not you you can just write uh, type down your your question so that we can address it or we can just share you know, today's about sharing, just share it out and, you know, uh, everyone can listen and, you know, learn from here. And then when we, before that, before that I was also saying, right, that uh, most of the Asian are actually quite conservative mm. in terms of talking about all this thing, which is proven <laughs> that, you know, yeah. not everybody is open to all these things. So what is your approach to giving solution for your client in this kind of uh, situation? Yeah, um, I, okay, so contrary to what a lot of people think, uh, there is no normal when it comes to sex. A lot of people like to ask me, how often should one masturbate? How often should couples have sex? Um, okay, so a lot of couples are actually having sex once a week that I know of, not because they don't want to have sex more often, but because they just don't have time and circumstances, work and all that. So a lot of long-term couples are actually having sex uh, once every two weeks, even once every three weeks because of the situation of the challenges that we have in life. Mm. So uh, for couples who want to learn, who want to grow, I feel that um, uh, uh, learning online is very useful because there are many, many videos, say on YouTube, that they can watch. And they can uh, read articles, they can uh, get ideas and before springing it on their partner, maybe say, hey, I, I read this or I saw this. Would you like to try this? Uh, what do you think? So sometimes their partner may shut them down because like I mentioned, some people are creatures of habit. They feel that it's okay. And I think we are, we are so conditioned to be contented, to be okay with being okay, that sometimes we, we stop... Uh, uh, exploring and being curious so rather than make it into uh, there's something wrong 
or we must be better, make it into uh, let's just just have fun. It's part of fun. And so the way we talk about sex can be in a kind of a curious, lighthearted, uh, even detached tone. So if I want something very, very badly and I put a lot of pressure on my partner, of course, they may not like it. But if I talk to them as if I don't care about it, as it's, it's like can also can, don't, don't want also okay, that kind of a tone, uh, I often find that it goes down much better with my partner. So slowly over time, I, I have been able to open up my past partners so that at least we are trying new things because they know that I like to try new things versus I, I blame them why they don't try new things. So, so it's about me taking responsibility for how I feel and what I like to do and inviting and, uh, uh, and not making it so serious, like pressurizing them. So this is what I mean. The, the way we, we do it can actually really support the partner to open up with us and uh, get support from the partner. Like, hey, I'm very curious about this sex shop. Huh? I want to see, huh? but uh, I'm very nervous about it. So why don't we uh, eat around there and then we see if it's still open, something like that. So it's much more gentle than spring it on your partner and say, after this, we go sex shop. <laughs> like, like, you know, just gentle, gentle, small steps. So I, I have free resources helps a lot. Uh, YouTube video, I have, I have 800 YouTube videos. Um, uh, reading books, uh, reading articles. Uh, start from there. I also have my festival coming up. Uh, so I'm doing a virtual sex festival called Sugar and Spice. It's a sugarandspice.asia. So in the festival, what I have done is, and this is this is actually the reason why I did this festival. Because I was so uh, sad uh, that a lot of my clients are coming to me and telling me the, the same things, which is they, they don't talk about sex with their partner. They don't talk about sex with their friends. They don't know who to talk to about sex. They, they want to learn more about sex, but they don't know how, they don't know where to go. So I, I created this festival where it's all Asians. So all the presenters are Asians to kind of start to let people realize actually Asians do like sex and Asians do talk about sex. And actually there are many of us who want to support other people to be more open about sex. So I've started to promote this to my clients, uh, explaining to them that uh, because the festival is on Zoom, they can keep their video on or off. They can turn their video on or off. And on Zoom, you can change your name. So it's pretty much anonymous and you can just learn. You can uh, private message the presenter. So it's very, very safe uh, environment for people to learn without leaving their house. And it's also it's also recorded. Uh, so I, I've I, uh, so during this time of the lockdown, I think a lot of people are now more open to technology. They are more open to Zoom, how to use Zoom. Uh, and I myself have been part of four sex festivals. And yeah, it really struck me because I was always one of the few Asians. And so that's how I started to think if I had a festival, I, I want my festival to be all Asians because I want it to be different from other festivals. And I want it something to be very... Uh, gentle and not too scary for all my clients who want to learn something about sex but didn't have any sex education growing up and um, making it affordable. Actually, there's really no reason why, why not join. However, we are two weeks to the festival and still the ticket sales is very slow. So I, I heard from my other colleagues that uh, such festivals, because they can just sign up at any moment. So I think hopefully ticket sales will pick up. But I have put in a lot, lot of time and energy to organizing this and uh, getting all these amazing people. Uh, so yeah, basically all of us come together for one reason, to support more people with their sex lives. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a good opportunity for, for, uh, for all Asians and also non-Asians to join us. Yes, yeah. uh, me and Angela will definitely join this Sugar and Spice Talk Asia uh, Festival. And uh, we will also be doing a shout out to all the NRSC members to yeah. please join us on in these festivals. Uh, as mentioned, this will be uh, anonymous. You can actually ask questions uh, with the speakers if you have any issues. And uh, you will not. nobody will know who you are. Nobody also want to bother. So just key in 
your answer or your questions so that you know the experts can give you some advice which might be useful for each and every one of us and also for NRSC uh, we will be sharing after this session to all the viewers so if you can just do support daughter Martha I think a lot of people also know about her and uh, she's quite famous in this area so please uh, you know support her and you will be surprised you know what you can get away from this festival I think yeah, yeah we even though I've I've I wanted to make it very very safe very gentle but I also mm. wanted to push the envelope a little bit I also wanted to introduce some topics that a lot of people may not have thought of and may not have uh, been exposed to so mm. things like some of the misconceptions that we have about Asians like you know this common thing that's happening yellow fever where white men are into Asians so they they tend to portray us as a certain uh, sex object and mm. so we have a discussion about yellow fever we have a discussion about sex money and power because uh, sex money and power because sex is not just sex a lot of time it's also about mm. power over someone you know that they can dominate you that you are with me because i'm rich things like that so we have a panel on sex money power we have a panel on sex workers we have some sex workers actually sharing their experiences so so we also have a uh, introduction to bdsm we have uh, introduction wow. to nice open BDSM. relationships uh, uh, oh, you, uh we, i like i like later you do for me candle <laughs> wax <laughs> Okay, it's supposed to be a secret. Okay, and then continue. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, BDSM, open relationships, uh, and also dating. Uh, now, now with uh, technology, with all these apps, uh, dating is not easy actually. But we yes. also have some very practical uh, workshops like uh, how to do vulva massage, uh, how to uh, for people with penises, how to have orgasm without ejaculation. So this is like. The, the Taoist way and uh, also other uh, we also have a fun one on like online stripping like how to tease your partner so you can watch the video and you can ask questions you can learn you can turn off your video so so there are many many uh, interesting workshops some of them are more educational and more uh, discussion and some are more practical so yeah mm -hmm. I, I like the program. I I've, I made a lot of effort to make sure there's a lot of diversity. There's something for everybody. Yeah, I think this movement would be great because I always feel that people don't talk about it and yet there are a lot of misconceptions about sex online. Like our kids, sometimes they play computer and sometimes there will be a porn popping out and how do we deal with it? This kind of thing. I think it's important to address and I hope that through uh, our collaboration, with I Neuro Secret Club, we can actually talk about sex in a positive manner, showing that pe to people that actually this is nothing to be shameful to talk about. And in fact, it's something that we all need. I mean, we are all adults and there's a physical need and without sex, they won't be babies. So, you know, I really glad that you stand up and start this movement. And I love the name Sugar and Spice. Yeah, because, uh, you know, we Asians love spice and who wouldn't like a little bit of sugar in their lives? <laughs> so is it, it's first to the 15th August. Is that a timing? Or? Yeah, so it's two weeks. So every weekday evening, there will be two workshops and on weekends, we have four workshops. So all together, we have 39 different sessions. So many, many sessions and you can just pay the, the hardship fee because there are three people were confused how come my festival got three prizes so it's self-declared you can pay uh very low which is only 39 which is one dollar per workshop or you can pay the higher prizes for people who are financially better um because uh we actually also because it's a virtual festival we don't have to worry so much about the cost but we do have costs so i I have volunteers helping me, but actually I also have uh, people that I'm paying that uh, I, I had to pay like the website. Mm. So, so yeah, I, I uh, it's more important that uh, we reach out to as many people as we can and we made it affordable. So I, I got something that I want to share. It's very interesting. Uh, this festival, I, I got all the presenters to, okay, not all of them did it, but uh, they did a promo video. So I have maybe like 23 videos, each of them promoting their workshop. So yesterday, 
yeah, it was yesterday. Wow. So the day before, I posted a video of me uh, interviewing my friend who is helping me with technology. His name is Elmer. So uh, that same day, uh, that, uh, that, so the next day, uh, Daily Express in UK, they said, can we feature your video on our website? So the video went to UK and then Ireland contacted me, Ireland radio station contacted me and yesterday they interviewed me uh, about sugar and spice as well. So, wow. so the festival actually uh, is, is going international wow. uh, in UK and Ireland. Yeah, so these are things that I never expected. And I also have more contacts now because of me putting out this festival. So uh, more Asian uh, educators are contacting me and uh, uh, I definitely see myself uh, uh, doing this again because um, we, it, it's, you know, even if we keep talking about the same topic, but it's important that we hear it from different people because different people uh, explain things in a different way. And sometimes you may need to hear the same thing again and again before you really, really understand it. Like me, <laughs> took me a while to understand certain things. So I, I, I really love it, you know, that uh, through the use of technology, we have made it affordable, accessible, anonymous, and uh, we can do a lot of good work out there. So yeah, I, 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 I feel a bit sad that, uh, you know, the ticket sales are, st are still very slow. But uh, I, I'm, I'm, we are going to push for it a lot more in the next two weeks. Great, because we already have some uh, people asking us to connect with you. So we will be linking some people up to you. Uh, and then we can also refer some of our contacts to visit your festival. Yeah. So Thank yeah, so it, was very, it was a very insightful uh, uh, mo uh, night together with uh, Dr. Martha and all the sharings that you have, you know, go through with us and of course we have many questions but i think uh timing is also uh one one top one issues we have to talk about but just one last question okay there's one question that uh, i would like to ask how does childhood experiences affect intimacy and sexual performance i would think maybe you have let's say um sexual abuse or harassment when you're young and then when they grow older they will not feel sexually attached or they don't want to have sex with their partner some even they don't have sex before their marriage so after marriage then they start to have sex that's when the problem comes right because the wife doesn't want to have sex and that's where the um you know affairs start to happen so how how, how can you you know um, help in terms of providing solutions for this kind of issues that the woman or guy yes. can so the, the past really affects our future and present. Uh, so the mm. past does affect my clients a lot. The lack of sex education affects a lot of people more than, okay, uh, I mean, because of the messages that we have in society, I think most of us uh, know that somebody who has been molested, who has been raped, they will have trauma. So actually the people who have trauma, they, they know that they need to seek help. It is the people who don't know that they need to seek help that is the worst type because mo all of us actually have some kind of wounding uh, in the sense that we did not have any sex education growing up, at least our generation and the generation after. Uh, it's only now, you know, in the last 10 years, I would say there's some sex education in school. Let's not talk about whether it's good. Uh, there's some sex education, even though by our generation, we had none. So people who had no sex education and there's a lot of shaming around it, including don't talk about it, it's rude, it's indecent, it's uh, disgusting to talk about sex. So we, no wonder we have so much people who don't really think about sex, don't care about sex, don't like sex, don't love sex, and even hate sex. So I, I feel that if, if we know that uh, uh, sex is more than just physical, if you suspect that there's nothing wrong with you physically and doctors have examined you, there's nothing wrong with you. It's most likely uh, psychological, the way you think about sex or even the lack of sex skills. So this is uh, where uh, and why I put out a lot of free content because I understand a lot of people, they don't necessarily want to pay for it because they think it's frivolous because it's not, in, it's not critical until their partner says they want to divorce them. So I, I feel a lot of pressure actually when my clients come to see me. So this is this is why I, I put out all these uh, uh, content because I want to support more people. I want it to be my legacy. And, you know, I have books and, and this and that because I want to help as many people as I can and not, not regret that I, I wasn't able to put out more of myself and more of my work to more people. Uh, 
so I guess my appeal to your viewers is that if 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 we understand that we didn't get sex education, so so if if we know more, then we will be more confident and we will have uh, more ease in our personal lives, in our sex lives. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I made this festival to make it more affordable and to reach out to more people through the unity of having more faces and more representation and letting you know that it's not just Dr. Martha Lee who only talks about sex all the time. Actually, there are a lot of people who talks about sex, a lot of people who love sex, a lot of people who want to help people with sex, a lot of people who actually know about sex. Uh, so when we start to see all this representation, hopefully there's a lot of healing that will take place. And sometimes healing is very subtle. You may not realize that actually a lot of your inhibitions, a lot of your negative attitude has already changed very quickly. And it's possible for it to change very quickly. Yeah. So yeah, I've that's... Also, that's yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, I've also shared uh, Dr. Martha's uh, Facebook uh, on our comments. So you could actually click on her Facebook to link up with her. Or, uh, and uh, sugarandspice.asia is already key in. So you could get all the information to, uh, uh, from there. I've also, we share the post on the festivals on the uh, NRSD uh, Facebook page. So please uh, go in and see more information. You know, it's on the 1st to the 15th. You can choose your own workshop at only like $1 a workshop. It's very worth it. So, uh, I mean, thank you again, once again, uh, Dr. Mata, for your time. And, you know, if uh, we have any question, please just hook up on her on Facebook. And, you know, anything, you can just refer back to us on NRSC. So any last question, uh, last, you know, words or last sentence to tell our audience before we end the day? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been a lot of fun. I guess my only message is um, for those of you who are scared, afraid, don't like sex, uh, try to learn more about sex because when we have more knowledge, we would become less afraid of anything. So our mind is so powerful. We can do a lot of things. Uh, as long as we have a positive attitude yeah so Maybe. we are all rooting for you all three of us we are rooting oh, for stop. you please i have some alcohol <laughs> release yourself a bit not so stressed and you no know, have a good talk with your partner have a good sex <laughs> all right so thank you everyone for viewing thank you dr mata we love thank to you. see you on the first of august okay thank you okay. thank you everyone good night bye bye bye, bye.